A British elite unit appeared at the railway station in Ireland. They were about to board the train with their weapons assembled. Two conductors suddenly rushed to stop them. The soldier yells at him to get out of the way. The conductor was scared but didn't move a step. At the same time, he called the driver who was conducting the train from a distance. The driver explained that he had received instructions from the Union not to carry any British and weapons. These words instantly angered the officer. He raised his rifle and forced the driver to get back in the car and drive. I'm not moving the car. Get back on the I'm train! The hey! Oh! Don't talk about that! Get back! Get back! Get back! Get back! Get Find someone to drive this train! You better get them on the train! Find someone to drive this train! You better get them now! Find someone to drive this train! Can you fuck off! He pinned the three men to the ground and beat them up. The people around him gnashed their teeth in anger, but did not dare to go forward to resist. When the driver and the others were about to be killed, soldiers rushed to pull away the officer. Then he ordered them to leave the station. After seeing the British troops leave, Mion helped the driver and the others to their feet. Such incidents were the norm in Ireland. Their brutality reminded Mion of his brothers who had been killed. Two days ago they had a field hockey game, but just as they were taking a break from the game, a British army squad came to the door and cornered the men who had just played. It turns out that under the Territorial Defense Act, the Irish were not allowed to have any public gatherings, and that included all multiplayer games. The officer then asked the men to give their names, addresses, and occupations. The first two were very cooperative in revealing their homes, but when it was Shaven's turn, he stubbornly answered in Irish. In order to resist the humiliating questioning of the British, seeing that the officer was angered by him, Sean's mother rushed forward to tell him to stop fooling around, but was violently driven to the side by the officer. Seeing his mother humiliated, he was so angry that he couldn't stand it. He went straight up and gave the officer a punch. The soldiers around him immediately controlled Sean. Then they took him into the chicken house next to him, hearing the miserable screams coming from inside the house. The crowd was anxious like ants on a hot pan. Sean's family tried to rush into the house, but they were stopped by force outside. A few minutes later, two soldiers came out of the chicken house with blood on their hands. The officer saw this and did not stop, turned around and left the place with his men. The crowd rushed in, but what they saw was a 17-year-old boy who had died. Afterwards, they gathered outside the house to discuss the matter in anger. England had been invading and colonizing Ireland since the 12th century. The people of Ireland have fought back numerous times, but they never succeeded. It wasn't until 1919 that the Irish War of Independence brought a glimmer of hope to the people. In 1920, almost the entire country of Ireland joined in this struggle. But Neon, who had just returned from his studies, did not know much about it. He thought Sharon's death was stupid. If he had said his name in English, he wouldn't have come this far. It would have been better to go to London for further education than to die here for nothing. So he declined to become a member of the IRA. The next day he went to the train station as planned, but here he saw once again the atrocities of the British army. His heart was finally shaken. He didn't want to go to London to be a lapdog of the British. So that afternoon, in the presence of the organization, he was sworn into the IRA that afternoon. In the following days, Neon and the other recruits began a series of military training sessions. It wasn't long before they were given a mission by their superiors, a night raid on a local British camp to steal their arms and weapons. But since it was their first mission, the member responsible for detonating the bomb was too nervous to light the fuse, and his sneaky behavior was caught by the soldiers upstairs. The soldiers rushed downstairs to teach him a lesson, but they were subdued on the spot, although there was a mistake in the operation, but at least the door was open. Everyone rushed in. As the British soldiers were sleeping, the raid went very well. All the arms were removed with little effort. The next day, Mion and the others were celebrating in the tavern, but a group of British soldiers suddenly rushed in. They ordered everyone to stand in a line without any reason. Then they searched them. I thought I had revealed my identity, but the British soldiers took their money and money. Then they waltzed into the private room. The crowd realized that they were here to rob the money, but Mion didn't act impulsively. Instead, they put on their clothes and kept looking out, as if they were waiting for someone to come. A woman in a hat entered the tavern. Then she took out four pistols from her pocket, handed them one by one to the man in front of her. The passers-by were so frightened that they prayed on the spot. Three of them took the weapons and went to the room. The other one was outside to keep watch. At the same time, also made a hush motion to make everyone quiet. The British troops inside the room did not know that their good days were coming to an end. After finishing them off cleanly, the crowd did not forget to scavenge their weapons. Then they left the tavern satisfied. The two successive actions also angered the British army. They tried to catch the IRA hiding here. But apart from spreading their anger on the innocent people, the British army and others could not find any clues at all. Just as they were about to return without any success, one of the local dukes tipped them off. A milkman in his residence was a strong suspect. Soon Chris was brought before the officers. At first, he was stiff-armed and denied it, until they threatened his mother. Only then did Chris reluctantly reveal everything. That night, the British army followed the clues and found the stronghold. They captured Neon and the others in a swift manner. Then the interrogation of Neon's brother Teddy, because he is the team leader must know a lot of information about the IRA. In order to force Teddy to talk, they even pulled out every nail of his. By the time he was returned to his cell, his hands were already bloody, but he still proudly said he didn't say anything. The British then interrogated the others one by one. When Neon's turn came, he said he was a member of the IRA. 
He demanded to be treated like a political prisoner. He then expressed in technical terms the legal status they had. And at this point, the British were acting criminally, realizing that the man before him was a man of culture with a backbone. The officer, without further ado, took out his pistol and handed it to the soldier next to him. He ordered him to kill Mion. Under the officer's pressure, the soldier reluctantly pulled the trigger. But fortunately, there was no bullet in the gun. The officer just wanted to scare Mion. The officer was pleased to see him twitching on the ground. He told Mion that tomorrow all of them would be sentenced for illegal possession of a gun. The day before the execution was to take place. The day before the execution, the soldier who shot Mion secretly opened the cell. It turned out that his father was also an Irishman, so he couldn't bear to see his countrymen dying in vain. So he secretly opened all the cells while the patrol was changing guard. But because of the missing key, three of his companions were not rescued. Mion, who escaped was very upset. When he was thinking about how to save his companions, his girlfriend Sydney brought an important piece of information. A friend of hers was a typist in the military camp, so she had access to many letters from the British Army. So she learned who had betrayed the IRA this time. With this clue, Mion and the others broke into the Duke's residence without stopping and coerced him to write to the British, asking the British to release their three companions. Otherwise, they would have to wait for the Duke's corpse. Then they found Chris, who had leaked the information. He would be held in captivity until his companions were released. The next day, the little girl brought them a letter. The letter indicated that the British had executed the three men anyway. They had tortured them inhumanely before the execution. Mion decided to execute the Duke and Chris. The others instantly turned pale. Chris was one of their own. There was no need to kill them all. But Mion's attitude was very firm. They were fighting a war, not playing a game. No traitorous behavior was acceptable. At a time like this, military performance was paramount. In the end, Mion killed the Duke himself and Chris, with whom he had played since childhood. It wasn't long before they received orders from their superiors again. They learned that a British reinforcements were coming through the area, and their mission was to wipe them out. The route was known in advance, so the men ambushed them on the hill. They were prepared to take them by surprise. He was holding a machine gun and lying calmly on the ground. Behind him, his teammates are keeping their posture motionless. The man in the lead turned around and waved his hand towards the opposite side of the hill. See, everyone waved okay gesture. He was relieved to walk down the hill because the most important part of this operation is Teddy. Only if he successfully intercepted the British troops, they have the opportunity to attack. When he saw the British team coming, Teddy disguised himself as a Brit. He pretended that his motorcycle had broken down. Then, the moment the other side stopped, they launched a surprise attack. Because the IRA was so well prepared. In the end, they sacrificed one man. The entire British squad was wiped out. In the triumphal return of the people, but halfway home heard the sound of shouting from the house of Sydney. They crouched carefully in the woods. They found several British soldiers yelling at the family. It turned out that they had learned from somewhere that Sydney was a member of the IRA. So they came to their door and tortured them mercilessly and set fire to their house. Mion was about to rush down to save his girlfriend, but was stopped by Teddy. They had just been through a big war. They didn't even have a single bullet in their hands. Rashly rushing up is undoubtedly to send death. Finally, after the British army left, they came out with a sigh of relief. Looking at Sydney's miserable appearance, the people were determined to avenge his death. But at this critical moment, a little boy suddenly appeared to deliver a letter. It said that Ireland and England had declared a truce. Their years of struggle had been won. The crowd cheered at the news. Even Sydney had a big smile on his face. But just when they thought their centuries of suffering were coming to an end, reality slapped them in the face. In December 1921, Britain and Ireland signed the Anglo-Irish Treaty. Britain recognized Ireland as a free state. It had all the autonomy of customs and foreign affairs. However, all members of the parliament had to be loyal to the British crown. Northern Ireland became a part of Britain. The crowd in the studio was furious. Was this the peace they had fought for with their lives? Everyone thought they had been set up by the Irish politicians. That's when Teddy told them that the British had issued a death warrant. If Ireland didn't sign the treaty, they would launch a national war against Ireland. The faces of the people were grim. They knew that if they went to war, they would not be able to stop them with the little power they had. But most people still did not accept the treaty, despite the change of colors of the flag. But the impoverished peasantry had nothing to gain. True freedom was still a stone's throw away. In the end, the Republican army was divided into two factions. One faction stood by its principles and fought to the end. The other faction joined the Free State Army. They became the national army of the new Irish government. Mion's brother Teddy was also one of them. The two brothers parted ways, and so a new struggle for power began, one side by side with their compatriots to fight each other's swords. And Berlin was the first salvo in the war. According to the letters sent by the superiors, the men learned that the Free State forces had attacked the IRA headquarters with British-supplied weapons. Enraged, Mion decided to strike back. They began to loot the Free State Army in an organized manner. There were even many casualties along the way. Teddy was anxious when he heard the news. They had been ordered to be arrested by their superiors. The next day he approached Mion. He pleaded with him to stop in time. He didn't want to fight with his own brother. But Mion believed that if he did not continue to fight, Ireland would sooner or later be taken over by Britain. Teddy shook his head. The government has now introduced many treaties that are beneficial to the poor. What they needed to do was to wait until they were strong. 
When they get stronger, they'll tear up the treaties and declare independence. But Mion didn't believe it. As far as he was concerned, the liberal government had become a servant of Britain, and he would always fight against it. He left without a backward glance. Not long after, the National Army began to suppress the Republican forces that were still resisting, and so the Civil War began. Weapons were stolen. Cool made Mion's team blocked in the building. During the battle between the two sides, his companion was unfortunately shot and collapsed. Nian hastily raised his hands and asked for a truce, but the other side not only ignored him, instead, he shot and killed his compatriots on the ground, and he was arrested for this. Afterwards, Teddy found him and talked to him. Now that he was a lieutenant, he was able to protect his disobedient brother, but only if he reveals all the IRA strongholds. The tone of his words was almost pleading. He didn't want to see his brother die for nothing, but Mion didn't say a word. Even if he died, he wouldn't be a traitor and betray his companions. In the end, Mion was sentenced to death. He was tied to a stake at dusk, and Teddy was the executioner. As he gave the order, the piercing sound of gunfire rang out in the world. The young man who fought for freedom and ideals had finished his life. Teddy stood by and sobbed uncontrollably. Afterwards, she handed Neon's suicide note to Sydney. She beat Teddy with grief. A word of accusation but stuck in the throat cannot speak. Teddy could not face his siblings, but ran away in a panic, leaving Sinead to wail alone in the same place. Finally, in 1923, the Republican army surrendered and the Civil War ended. But what happened afterwards was just as Teddy had predicted. In 1937, Ireland was officially declared an independent and democratic Commonwealth country, while still honoring the British king as head of state. But they already enjoyed full sovereignty in practice. It wasn't until 1948 that Ireland became a republic and withdrew from the Commonwealth. This severed the last formal ties with Britain. 